ye, and also hear me. With the power vested in me as the internet completionist of video games, and also Alex Fossiani's power as head of Patreon, I guess, it has come time for me to decree for one and all that soon I will be completing a game and releasing an early access episode on it exclusively for completion bonus members on our Patreon. Isn't it crazy that these are the lengths we have to go through to make stuff without worrying about pleasing the algorithm? Isn't it crazy that I wrote every last word coming out of Gerard's mouth? And to determine which game to complete, I am holding a tournament of games on patreon.com slash the completionist. Before ye is a list of 16 games ye always are asking for me to make an episode on. This week, completion bonus members will vote to turn that into a list of eight games. Next week, they'll turn it into a list of four. Then the next week, two. Until finally, we have a winner and an episode will be made. And don't worry, there's gonna be more than a few surprises along the way because I'm going to be the one that writes it. Wait, hold on. You, me, is going to be the one that writes the episode, or you, Alex, is going to be the one that writes it? Because that's something we didn't discuss. I need to I need some clarity on that. Oops, too late. Should have thought about that before we started shooting. Bye! What? Hello? Where did you even go? I'm still standing here. I know. We never really figured out all the rules of this bid, did we? Do you think I can keep doing this all year? I don't know. <sighs> I, I, I don't know, you guys. Tournament of games. Exactly. Now take us out, champ. Uh, hear ye, hear ye. Head on over to patreon.com slash the completionist to lay down your sword, your bow, and my axe to vote in this month's tournament of games. Always just five bucks a month. There are a lot of reasons to love The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Some loved it for its refreshing approach to narrative, others loved its vast open world, or its chemistry engine, which made solving puzzles and uncovering secrets even more fun and personal by creating a limitless potential for unique interactions between the player, the game's world, and its inhabitants. And there are so many other reasons to love Breath of the Wild. But whatever your reason is, it all explains why we are all so hungry hungry for its sequel, which has sadly been delayed yet again. Luckily, you don't have to wait to play Breath of the Wild 2 to fill that empty heart on your health bar. So today, let's venture out of Hyrule and off the beaten path with some stellar indie games that scratch that same itch. With the completionist new game plus coming to an end, the time has come for me to show you all some brand new shows that we here at TOBG have been working on. And hopefully, you'll like her ideas. So, if you liked The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you should try It should probably come as no surprise that Kena Bridge of Spirits comes first on this list. Before releasing Kena on PC and PlayStation, developer Ember Lab created a short film that many fans of the Zelda series know and love, Majora's Mask Terrible Fate. One glance at Kena's world is all it takes to see the similarities between it and Breath of the Wild's Hyrule. Both embody a deep, spiritual reverence for the natural world, incorporating a Studio Ghibli-esque sense of wonder and beauty at every turn. The Kena Bridge of Spirits doesn't just look like Breath of the Wild. In some ways, it also feels like it. Like Zelda games, Kena is set in an imaginary realm peppered with magical shrines and collectible goodies like Spirit Mail, which can be delivered to unlock new parts of the map, and Cursed Chests, which trigger challenges that can be completed in exchange for various rewards. Instead of saving up rupees for gear, you'll be gathering up gems to buy hats for your adorable little rock companions. And if you're yearning for more puzzles, Kana's got your back. You'll encounter more than one head scratcher throughout your journey that will help you 
keep your problem-solving muscles honed during your hiatus from Hyrule. Kana's staff may not be as much of a multi-tool as a Sheikah Slate, but you can use it as more than just a weapon. You can set off a magical pulse that can be used at various times as a shield, a locator spell for nearby secrets, and as a means of triggering certain environmental interactions. The staff also serves as both a melee and ranged weapon as one upgrade lets you transform it into a bow. Even the bow has multi-purpose, doubling as a grappling hook in certain situations. Your rock companions are similarly versatile. Commanding them like they're the general of the cutest little army ever, you can ask them to move heavy objects, transform into different shapes, and distract and even attack enemies, provided you collect enough courage during battle to inspire them to join the fray. One significant difference between Breath of the Wild and Kana Bridge of Spirits is its narrative. If you walked away from Link and Zelda's story with more questions than answers, you're not the only one. Being able to encounter any plot point at any given time during your playthrough sometimes led to story beats feeling a little odd and disjointed. Because Kana's progression is more linear, the story is a bit tighter. And because Kana isn't a silent protagonist like Link, the game is able to sidestep all the awkward pauses endured in Breath of the Wild's cutscenes. Beyond their differences in approach to narrative, the biggest difference between the two games is size. Kana is a smaller game than Breath of the Wild, significantly smaller. But if Breath of the Wild was an epic fantasy feast, one all too easy to overindulge in, Kana is more of a light snack, but a very tasty one, short and sweet. A stylish debut title from two-person development team Shedworks, Sable is the love child you would get if Breath of the Wild and Star Wars The Force Awakens had a video game baby. The game looks like it takes place on the desert planet Jakku. All golden sand, huge gray ruins, and masked scavengers picking through bones and collecting scrap but it borrows its open world structure and non-linear progression directly from Hyrule. Almost immediately upon starting the game, you'll notice some all too familiar trappings akin to Breath of the Wild, like a stamina bar. Although thankfully, it both doesn't rain often in the desert, and you also don't have to worry about dying of exposure because you ran out of chillish shrooms and hydromelons. You won't find any pretty ponies to ride here either, but you do get a hover bike. It's kind of like a sci-fi version of a horse, I guess. Unlike clothing, which is purely cosmetic, your bike can be upgraded in various ways that will impact how effectively you navigate different terrain. To upgrade your bike at a machinist shop, you need the right parts. Some can be obtained simply by completing quests like the ancient races. But more often than not, you'll be scavenging for scraps to sell for cuts. That's the game's currency, to buy the parts that you need. As for puzzles, yeah, Sable's got a few of those too. And though they're not as elaborate or pervasive as in Breath of the Wild, or even Kana Bridge of Spirits, they'll definitely make you stop and think. The biggest difference between Midden, Sable's world, and Hyrule, however, is how surprisingly safe it is. Despite looking exactly like the kind of place you'd expect to get eaten by one of those giant sandworms from Dune, there's absolutely nothing to fight. Sable is completely combat-free. Instead, the game encourages players to explore without fear or constraint. If what you loved most of Breath of the Wild was the chill freedom of choice and the thrill of unexpected unscripted encounters, there's a good chance you'll enjoy chasing Midden's glittering horizons. And yes, there's a quest log and a map and even a neat handheld compass to direct you to the next point of interest, should you get lost in the dunes. But the game isn't pushy about making you use any of these items. So if you just want to hop on your hover bike and see where the wind takes you next, Sable is the sort of game that favors players with a healthy appetite for adventure. You wouldn't necessarily expect to look to the past for a modern spin, but it'll do. An early title from Ludo City, the same team behind Princess Remedy and Slap City, offers exactly that. And yes, as a top-down 2D action-adventure game that originally came out back on PC in 2013, it'll do may look more like Link to the Past, but it is sporting a slew of complex puzzles with multiple solutions that are perfect for Breath of the Wild fans looking for a new challenge. And good news, it's now on Switch too. It'll do makes no secret of its spiritual ties to the Zelda series. In fact, it openly embraces this. The game is rife with references and self-aware jokes tailor-made for any hero of Hyrule with a good sense of humor. It takes great delight in poking fun at familiar tropes and questioning the logic behind mechanics players tend to take for granted, like picking hearts up off the ground and consuming them to heal yourself. One of the most notable similarities is the game's willingness to let you jump ahead to the final boss battle if you're chomping at the bit to beat the big bad. 
Just as Link can face off with Calamity Ganon close to the beginning of Breath of the Wild, it'll do offers difficult shortcut puzzles which, if solved, get her to the final showdown much more quickly than playing through the game at a much more normal pace. Exactly how the final fight plays out depends on whether you favored a traditional approach or the speedrunning route, with the battle and the puzzles adjusting based on how you played. Similar to the various Sheikah Slate abilities and weapons in Breath of the Wild, but on a much smaller scale, it'll do collects powerful items during her journey, each of which grants new attacks and interactions that can help her solve predicaments in even more creative ways. The fire sword can be used to melt ice blocks or light fire activated switches. Portal wand can create barriers to hide behind or teleport items from one spot to another. Compared to the puzzles, the combat in this game is surprisingly straightforward, at least until you get to the boss battles. Face off with baddies like the Lishwist Turnup show off the full versatility of It'll Do's combat abilities, echoing Link's assortment of ranged and melee options in Breath of the Wild. It'll Do is a relentless parody of the Legend of Zelda franchise and its various offshoots, but it's also a loving tribute. And if the first one floats your boat, I've got good news for you. There's already a sequel. If It'll Do was Breath of the Wild's rambunctious cousin, Mega Wobble's upcoming open world adventure game, Little Gator Game, could easily pass as its adorable kid brother. From the moment you press start, it hits you with a wave of nostalgia. Everything from the painterly aesthetic and nature-based setting to the gentle flutes welcoming new players. Little Gator's sunshine-soaked world is an echo of the wonder we experienced when Link stepped out of the Shrine of Resurrection and onto the Great Plateau for the first time. The likenesses do not stop there though. One set of quests leads you to equip a sword, a shield, and a pointy hat that basically lets Little Gator cosplay as Link. You can even get a glider made out of, let's say, an old t-shirt that lets you soar through the skies much like the old man's paraglider. And you can climb anything, and I mean anything, once you've got the bracelets of power, provided you've got enough stamina to make it to the very top. Little Gator can even shield surf just like Link, or Legolas for that matter. And if you enjoy crafting in Breath of the Wild, well, guess what? Little Gator Game also has some arts and crafts projects for you to sink your adorable reptilian teeth into. Although it's nothing as extensive as Link's repertoire of cooking recipes, the game's demo lets you make your own hat as well as you can become a ragdoll that lets you fall from any height unharmed. The full game will likely feature more of the same. Like Sable, Little Gator Game heartily embraces a fully open world concept, letting you complete quests and make progress at whatever pace you choose, and in any order. And like it'll do, Little Gator has a sense of humor about it all, but a much gentler one. It's a game that's all about recapturing the magic of a happy childhood spent playing games with friends. Little Gator Game glows with a nostalgic charm reminiscent of the lighter side of Link and Zelda's saga. Compared to the trials and tribulations you must overcome to save Hyrule from Calamity Ganon, however, Little Gator Game is a much more casual, low-stakes experience. Your main quest isn't to defeat some centuries-old monster to save the world. You're just a little gator trying to get your big sister to play with you like she used to. Little gator doesn't even have a health bar because he doesn't need one. There's no enemies to defeat here, only friends. And the only danger in this game is that of growing up too soon. At least, that's as far as I know when I played the demo. You see, unfortunately, Little Gator Game isn't out just yet. At least not the time of recording this video. In fact, the only reason why I got to play it was at Indie Land, which is our charity event we have every year. But it's currently planned to release sometime this year. So, wishlist this game on Steam, and with any luck, the wait won't be too long at all. At least not as long as Breath of the Wild 2 at any rate. So there you have it. Four awesome Breath of the Wild-like indie games worth looking at. Whether it's a bit more exploration you're after, more puzzles, or a little bit of both. Are there any other indie games out there like Breath of the Wild that I missed? Leave a recommendation in the comments down below. The more the merrier. Otherwise, thank you for watching. And hey, this is a new show we're trying out. So if you'd like other game recommendations, some of your existing favorites, leave those requests in the comments down below. I have played a lot of games and I always love to make recommendations for everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Have a great weekend. And remember, keep playing games. Bye.